Real people, real breakthroughs. This is the Psychology of Eating podcast, where psychology and nutrition meet to uncover the true causes of our unwanted eating concerns. Your relationship with food will never be the same. Now, here's your host, eating psychology expert and founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, Mark David. Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, and here we are in the Psychology of Eating podcast. I'm here once again with Holly. Welcome, Holly. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, good to see you. And and this is our follow-up session. So for those of you familiar or not familiar with the podcast, Holly and I met a bunch of months ago, and we chit-chatted about you know, a little bit about sugar, your attachment there, a little bit about checking out when you eat and definitely a concern that, you know, there's not going to be enough food. I got to stock up, you know, kind of a, kind of an inner fear that like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have enough. Um, and, and, and it was a fascinating conversation, at least for me. And I'm just wondering, how's it been for you since we've spoken? Oh my gosh. Well, I, first of all, like that session was so incredibly important um, and terrifying because it was so important. I didn't realize until we I voiced it how much it really did impact me mm. every single day um, and that I'd been running from it. And so just putting it out there, I mean, I, no- I noticed shifts immediately. Um, the anxiety that I had around not being prepared or having my schedule interrupted um, and therefore having to experience and feel that hunger. Um, I'd say by f- within four days afterwards, it was gone, just wow. completely gone. So, I mean, the intensity has gone. I'm sure there's something still there. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm blown away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just how important, how impactful that was. Wow. You know, isn't it fascinating how, on the one hand, you know, as you said, just kind of speaking it and saying, hey, this really impacts me. You know, there's a there's just a down and dirty level of authenticity and honesty in there, because I don't know, it seems like we're supposed to walk around this world and not necessarily share what's really driving us and what I'm really afraid of and what I'm really like obsessing about all the time. And a lot of times we have to keep that stuff in Mm -hmm. and pretend it's not there and we got to look good, whatever looking good means. Yep. And sometimes just being able to say it and be witnessed, that starts a process that's really Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also recall um, your suggestions about dialoguing with my inner child um, who was stuck with the four or five year olds men um, coping strategies around, mm-hmm. you know, I guess hoarding food, making sure there's a lot around. Um, and and I, I felt like by that, that fourth day, when there was an, another situation had come up that would have triggered an anxiety response. Um, when I checked in with that inner child, it felt like she was a teenager. It felt like she was growing up and her strategies mm. were changing. So I could have a, I guess, more of an adult conversation with her around what's going on and have more like a back and forth rather than a consoling a small child. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, that, that was really powerful itself but it was that was that was a significant uh I guess part of the experience was being able to see this this wounded child this inner child um I guess start to grow up yeah I think we've all got it you know so many so many smart people say that um you know we have these different archetypes inside of us and one of them is the inner child and that child you know, it's beautiful. It's sweet. It gives us our childlike nature. Um, It keeps us young. And at the same time, you know, let's pay attention to it and see how much airtime it gets and the places where it's not so childlike and innocent, but it could be very childish Mm. and hold us back. Um, and, And sometimes it just takes noticing that like, oh, here's the places, you know, certain places in my life, I am really mature. Um, and there's other places, it's embarrassing how I regress so quickly in those few areas. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and it's just good to be aware. Oh, here's where I become like a twelve year old. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, I think with food, food kind of transports us back <laughs> to certain times in our life. And and you know, a, as you were speaking, I was thinking how. You know, if previously the main kind of worry or fear was like, oh, my God, I might be hungry. I have to hoard food. It's almost as if I can't really flow into my life because I'm bracing against this thing that's going to happen. So I can't really flow. I can't really relax. I can't really be me because I'm I'm bracing against this, this problem that I think is going to occur. And then when we're not bracing against it, there is a beautiful flow. <laughs> Life mm-hmm. is a heck of a lot easier. Absolutely. No, I think, you know, that bracing, that, that whole feeling of that anticipation, I mean, that just, it, I can feel that anxiety when I think of those two together. Mm-hmm. There's, yeah, definitely a connection. So what else have you noticed in your life that's that's shifted at the same time that mm. this eating piece has transformed? Oh, I <laughs> I feel like I can go farther. Mm. <laughs> Instead of having like a one hour, two hour time limit and and always having to kind of go back, run back to the base and and look at the schedule and plan it all out and have it all figured out. I, I just, it feels so much more freeing. Um, and that in itself has allowed me to do other activities and just feel relaxed that I know I'm going to take care of my body and I will feed it. Uh, there just will be times where I'm going to have to experience, you know, the discomfort of hunger and it's okay. Mm. And that was humongous. (laughs) Yeah. It's almost like letting, letting the child in us know, yeah, you, you might get hungry. And it's okay. You know, we'll find some food. (laughs) It's going to be all right. You ain't going to starve. And and sometimes we we literally just have to connect the dots with those voices. Oh, there's this part of me that just wasn't okay with this feeling Mm. that might make me think, oh, my God, I'm going to die almost, which is irrational, but it still lives in us. Mm hmm. You know, and and I also want to say, and I don't think we we talked about this last time, but it's a very rational fear that I will not have enough food. It's extremely rational because if you look around like at the animal kingdom and in nature, that's that's the commerce. The commerce is I need to eat. Creatures, there's there's creatures outside your house looking for food right now. You know, out, you know, on my property here in Colorado, coyotes are out every night. And even during the day sometimes, they're looking for food, you mm. know. Um, so we have to survive. And there's this legitimate place where if I don't have food, I might not survive. So a lot of that is an old programming. It's a, it's a legitimate wiring in our system like, oh, my God, I got to make sure there's enough food. And it lives in our DNA somewhere. Mm. And, and sometimes those are just those, those survival instincts then become more active in us and they kind of take over. Um, because the fact is, if you have a little bit of money and you have a grocery store down the street, you will be okay. Mm. It's really not a survival situation, but somewhere we think it is. And we have to kind of, you know, mature out of that. And it, and it sounds like that's what you've done. You mm-hmm. know, you've, you've taken really on one level a primal fear that was sort of operating and like, okay, let's just give this its rightful place. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I see where you're going. For sure, for sure. But yeah, this is more of like a first world problem. This is not <laughs> <Yeah>. illogical. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But it but it shows you how how the mind can be so insane. Mm. You know, our own minds can be so crazy as to think that we're starving when we have a house full of food. Our own minds could be so crazy to think that we're these terrible people because maybe we have five more pounds than we think we should have. You know, the mind could be like a pretty torturous sort of character. Um, And we're just we're just 
learning how to harness it better and control it a little better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else you've noticed in your life where things have expanded or opened more? Mm, I guess going along with all that freedom and that being released from all the anxiety is just an overall confidence boost. Mm. I just overall just feel happier and shinier. <laughs> you kind of look it, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little biased here, but it, it just, I feel like I'm talking to a different person. It feels like, um, like the, um, the woman factor in you has really kind of increased. Mm. Is that true for you? I would think so. Yeah. It's all that confidence. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, the whole archetype of the queen has come up over and over and over again in the last year. And I'm 39. So yeah, I know, I know I'm on my way to queendom. Mm. So I love the idea of stepping into my, my queenly power and, and all that confidence that comes with it and the not caring <laughs> what other people think and the perspective and the wisdom. Now, remind me again, you're in relationship or you're married? I'm married, yes. Yeah, how long now? Almost 13 years, 13 years in a few weeks. Has your husband noticed any difference in you? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen shifts in him too. Really? He definitely mirrors, you know, when I'm feeling confident and happy, then he's, he seems to reflect it back. Isn't that interesting how that works? Mm -hmm. You know, one person in the system changes and the other people change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that too. It's, it's, it's kind of a, um, it feels like a mystical process. You know, sometimes I've noticed in relationship when I've hit a wall or there's an impasse, when I make an internal change, my partner will make an internal change that day too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like they're invisibly kind of cat, like we're invisibly catalyzing each other on some level. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Like, I'm, I'm really happy for you. What, what do you, what do you see as next steps for you in terms of where you want to grow into in relationship to food in relationship to your body, just your sense of self, like, What's what's next? Hmm, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I feel like I'm just still in the in the afterglow <laughs> mm. from this discovery, but uh, that is a great question. Um, yeah, I just I'm really enjoying this like comfort I have around eating and knowing that I can take care of myself and um, sharing the experience with uh, others. Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a friend or a client or someone else, uh, just knowing that it's it, you can survive this, <laughs> it feels really trapping, uh, like you're completely enclosed at the time and just have no idea what to do next because it's definitely how I felt. Um, I really didn't know what to do before. And now I feel like there's just so much open to me mm. that I could... Uh, there's yeah there's just a lot of options so i'm i think i'm just gonna play and and see how it how it goes i think that's the perfect answer <laughs> you know sometimes that's that is the highest next expression for us is to just play in this new place it's like oh i've had the, i have this newfound freedom i have this newfound expansiveness um let me play <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me create. Let me see what happens. I that's that to me is a plus in my book. Oh, good. Yeah. No, <laughs> it feels really. right. It yeah. feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Thank um, you. Yeah. And and congratulations in really you know making the effort to kind of break through. You know, you you are at where you're at right now because you took some risks, and mm -hmm. you're at where you're at because you invested your time and your energy and your life force and your money and just you've invested in yourself mm. to better yourself. And uh, it, it's nice to connect the dots that you're experiencing those dividends now of some hard work. Definitely. I, I knew, like I said, I was terrified when we had our first session. Yes, I remember. I was terrified what we were going to uncover and 
and I'm just blown away by how much how much has shifted and how quickly. Yeah. I did not see that at all. So I am definitely very happy that I'm on the other side of it now. Yeah, and and look how easy it is to talk about it now. Oh, I know, <laughs> right? Easy. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think that's how life keeps working. You know, so the next time we hit the place where like, oh my God, here's this piece that's really hard for me. Mm. Wouldn't it be great to remember, oh, yeah, the last time I hit a place like that, wow, when I came to the other side, <laughs> it was like it had never happened. Yeah, you know? exactly. No, yeah. it definitely. It's definitely crossed my mind of like if any obstacle comes up in the future that I could, I should definitely be leaning in, not running from it for years mm. and years and years. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a great way to put it. And, you know, again, it's it's just such a great reminder that our... Our internal world, you know, no matter how crazy it seems, um, it has such a big impact on our expression mm. and how we do life. And when we really attend to, you know, what's going on inside of us and the crazy habits and the crazy language that we speak to ourselves, when we begin to really break that down and notice, oh, wow, how do I, how do I turn these things around? How are they impacting me? Oh, look at this fear that I have around food. When we really embrace those and look at those, woo, you know, powerful learnings happen. So mm -hmm. I'm thrilled for you. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I yeah. mean, yeah, wow. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being brave. Thanks for sharing your journey publicly. You know, what a cool thing that we could do that. Uh, <laughs> Because there's a lot of people that get impacted, you know, we all get impacted by each other's story. And, you know, for those of you tuning in and listening in right now who didn't hear Holly's first session, I highly recommend you check it out just so you could see the difference in these two ladies because I'm remembering very clearly. I took a peek at the other session before we got on the phone, <laughs> before we started talking and like, wow, like big difference. So... From over here, again, you know, work well done, and, and I hope you feel good about yourself and proud about yourself. Oh, yes, I do. Yay. Yay. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much, Holly. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. And thanks, everybody, once again for tuning in. I'm Mark David. On behalf of the Psychology of Eating podcast, as always, there's going to be lots more to come. Take care. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening to the Psychology of Eating podcast. To learn more about the breakthrough body of work we teach here at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, please sign up for our free video series at ipe.tips. That's I for Institute, P for Psychology, E for Eating, dot tips, T-I-P-S. You'll learn about the cutting-edge principles of dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition that have helped millions of people forever transform their relationship with food, body and health.